In the past few days, there has been another death around measles, and it was in an unvaccinated male. Um, and therefore, a lot of the attention has been on the vaccination status of people vaccinated versus unvaccinated. And this seems to be a knock-on effect from COVID, the COVID pandemic, where we had these huge arguments about vaccinated and unvaccinated. And I think it's being used as a distraction for us to focus on really what is going on. So when I think about this and I look at this, it's not just about the unvaccinated cohort with measles, and there's no doubt that the measles vaccine has great benefit, but there seems to be a much more serious issue going on with regards to circulation of the measles virus. And that's really where I am focused. And when we see this report here, this is from SIDRAP, second death reported as measles cases climb in Texas and New Mexico. This was on the 7th of March, and you have here an un unvaccinated adult who died recently tested positive for measles. Important to note that it doesn't mean he died of measles, but that would be the implication based on the fact that he tested positive for measles and depends on what he died from. But if you remember, a child has recently died and um, I would be able to explain to you why I think almost certainly even without seeing any autopsy details, why the history would be very suggestive that that death would have been related to measles. So measles is not something to be underestimated. And it has largely been kept in control for a number of years as they maintain vaccination levels. Um, but it seems that there is an argument that because vaccination levels have fallen somewhat, as people have become more hesitant after the COVID pandemic, that that's the reason. I am saying I don't think it's as simple as that. And very recently, I had done the principle of the neurological COVID storm. And this was in India, where they had outbreaks of uh, Campylobacter, and suddenly they had Guillain-Barre syndrome. It's not that you didn't ever have this occurring, but this was an unusual pattern. And based on what I had been saying previously, I had said that I thought that this was tied to a surge of COVID infection. Once you understand the interaction between COVID and measles, you'll realize why this is such an absolutely serious combination where I'm looking for what I call that storm. Now, when you realize how infective measles is, and the measles is extremely infective here. And you can see here that when they compare the basic reproduction number, that means the amount of people who will get infected after one person is contagious. And you can see that uh, flu is just about one. One person gets it, one person passes it on, that kind of thing. But when you get down to like mumps 3.5, so every one person who is contagious will pass it to three and a half people. If you go all the way down, measles can be up to 15. It's about nine here, where if one person has it, they can spread it to nine others. A similar pattern, if not higher, occurs with Omicron, where they pass it on oftentimes asymptomatically to other people. This is a very important point. Because what I've been saying is that measles is likely to be circulating in the vaccinated cohort and therefore infecting the unvaccinated and potentially other vaccinated people who are not immune savvy. That's a better word that I'm creating a word here, meaning their immune system may have been suppressed because of recent interaction with COVID. And this is what I'll be dealing with in this upcoming session on looking at measles in great detail. I've already started to put the presentation together, but I want you to join me um, at the link below where you can come in and we'll do a detailed session going through some of the characteristics of measles, how it overlaps with COVID, why the combination is such a serious threat to public health, I can't explain why public health is not taking this more seriously because the implications are horrendous. And so when you look at just a few basic points that I'll cover in much more detail, the timeline for measles infection, 
and the start of the contagious period about day eight, resolution of the rash by about day 22. In this period of time, people are largely contagious and they oftentimes spread virus even before they've had symptoms. And it, critically, when you come to the presentation, we'll be talking about which immune cells are infected. It's a really important point that even though measles is, you see the rash, it actually is primarily a respiratory virus. A lot of people don't quite get that connection. It operates very similarly to COVID. This is why the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the critical thing about measles is that it infects immune cells, spreads then in the immune system. Then when it's spreading to other people, it infects respiratory cells and fascinating system. So it's not easy to block, which is why it's so easy for it to break through immune defenses. Similarly, COVID will do a very similar pattern, infecting immune cells as well as respiratory epithelial cells. And so both together are an absolute nightmare when it comes to the impact on the immune system. And this is the point that I'm making with regards to this storm. Don't underestimate the principle. When I talk about this storm, where you have both viruses circulating avidly in a population, this is a nightmare scenario because both of them suppress the immune system. They literally, measles literally will wipe out the immune memory for almost everything. This is pretty serious stuff. And so if this occurs and continues to occur across the population, we can expect quite significant longer term health issues. Now, in order to understand it, you have to tease out exactly what happens between the viruses and how the, the parallel one on top of the other, one before the other. So say for instance, if COVID occurred first and then measles, what's the difference? If it was measles first wiping the immune memory and then COVID, is it a difference? What would happen to disease presentation? That's really the kind of thing that we will be covering in terms of this here. So I want you, very importantly, if you want to understand more about the science, definitely click on the link below. The unseen threat is measles about to intensify amid COVID. This is a very, very challenging situation. And again, some people may say, why are you talking about this? Because there is no evidence. As usual, this is going ahead of the science. I am extrapolating what we know to try and predict what is going to happen next. That's essentially risk management, risk mitigation, trying to understand the science, trying to apply the science, trying to look at what's going to happen, look at the outcomes. How can you protect against it? How, what are the steps you need to take now in order to reduce the risk in the future? That's what we have to be doing now, but it requires critically an understanding of COVID and I've been following this for such a long time, I'm now able to integrate many of these things together. So definitely, if you want to learn more about this, join me. The unseen threat is measles about to intensify. And critically, if you don't believe my predictions, just watch what's going to be happening over the next few weeks and months. I expect circulation, which is already high across the US, multiple parts of the US at the same time. So it's not being circulated just by the vaccinated. There is something else going on. It needs to be addressed and you need to be prepared. Have a great evening.